Hello, once again, I will be speaking with Bishop Dr. H.J. Sebama, the founder of Glorious Light International Church, Malawi. It's resided near Mchesi Primary School in Lilungwe, Malawi. This time around, we have seen a lot of questions that you have asked. Why would the prophetesses that served under Prophet T.B. Joshua be in the same church twice in one year? What was his relationship with this man of God they served under? That it seems as if he is their second father, physical father after his departure. We have seen a lot of questions that you have asked. And as usual, because we like to feed you feedback or clear, put light in your confusion. We have requested the bishop to sit with us again so that he can put more light in all the situations. Why do I need to tell you what I know when the horse can speak in himself? So come with me as we speak to the bishop so that we can hear directly from the horse's mouth. Nice to meet you, Thank bishop. You. It's a blessing. It's okay, Chisoma. <laughs> <laughs> and then good morning and win today. We always win. Good morning and win always. Okay, it's let's start from there best. before we even meet um, Bishop Abraham Semama. Um, Prophet T.B. Joshua had good morning or has good morning and win today. Yes. And then Emmanuel. Yes. When we came to Malawi, in your church we discovered that it's Chisomo. Chokwandila. So please, why the uniformity in the, um, what T.B. Joshua yes. does and after that? God gives everybody uh, a revelation and a vision according to what God has reserved for that person. Because everybody God calls, he gave an assignment. And that assignment has a purpose. And that purpose has a reason behind it. So if you read the scripture, you will find that people like Joshua, they were given their own name, their own word. Hallelujah. People like Moses, they were given their own, their own word. And the prophet TV Joshua, my brother and my mentor and my friend for years, was also given this, uh, different names. He was given a different vision, Emmanuel. He was given good morning and win always. Me too, I was given mine. When I started my ministry, the Lord said, it will be the grace. And your people, they should receive it. That mm -hmm. is sufficient. Mm -hmm. That's why in Chichewa is a local language. We are saying Chisomo in Jowanira. Mm -hmm. the grace is always sufficient. God had assured me that life that are going to come to this place will come by the grace of God. Wow. People that will enter in this place, premises, in this temple, it will be by the grace of God. Wow. And the healing will be there by the grace of God. Deliverance will be the grace of God. And uh, that grace is sufficient for everybody. Jesus is knocking to every man's doors and every person's doors. But he said, whoever will hear and open that door, mm. I will in time down with him. Mm. So the grace is sufficient. It's just a matter of somebody opening that door and receive that grace. Okay. The grace is sufficient for us indeed because we have entered this place. And I can assure you, we got our own portion. Uh, so can you tell us, who is this Bishop Dr. Abraham Simama? Bishop Dr. Abraham Simama is a humble man, uh, a servant of God, called by God, by His grace again, mm -hmm. to save him, to save him for the glory of God. Uh, I'm a man married, mm -hmm. uh, born in 1960, and uh, with a wife mm -hmm. and five boys and one girl by the grace of God. Wow. <laughs> and uh, called to serve God over 30 years ago. And uh, this is the man that uh, believes in me, serving God in humbleness mm. and allowing God to do his will, not my will and not anybody's will. Mm -hmm. He's a man who trusts to feel for others 
and do to others what he believes he will love them to do for himself. So that's the man you're talking to with right now. And that is Bishop Ages. Okay, so um, would you tell us about your relationship with uh, God's general, our father, our mentor, Hallelujah. Prophet T.B. Joshua? My own brother. <laughs> <laughs> I've known TV Joshua since 1993. but that time, Emmanuel TV was not on the air. Wow. So, most of uh, people, they don't understand this, but he uh, himself knows. And those who have been there, they know. People like, uh, some have left, of course, I don't mm -hmm. want to mention their names. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, they've left in a positive note, some of them in negative notes, but uh, we give glory to God. Yeah. But since 1993, when I've known, Prophet TB Joshua to me that I had an encounter with God through him. Mm. God used him in that 1993 to change my life. I'm a person who he is today because God gave me the grace to meet this great servant of God, this general of God. Mm. If my life could not have met this general of God, maybe I could not have been sitting here and talking with you today. But by the grace of God, I met him through a friend, of course, who introduced me to him. Mm. Uh, sometimes we meet people because of trouble. Yes, I had some problem that took me in that, in that place. It was a business failure. I was not achieving anything in my life. Wow. But the moment I had an encounter with him, he did not only deliver me on business failure, but he revealed what the Lord has put in my life as a servant of God. What was that? Uh, he said, you have got a calling. You have got a calling. Unless you balance the two, even you are, you not, will not move. Oh. And uh, since that time, he has been a brother to me. We've been meeting almost every year, if not sometimes twice in a year, I go there. And uh, to me, Prophet T.B. Joshua, I've met men of God. Mm. In the over 30 years as a minister of God, I've met several men of God. Mm. And honestly speaking, I've never seen a humble man of God like him, number one. Number two, I've never seen an anointed man of God like him. Number three, I've never seen a love person who walks with the love of God like him. Mm -hmm. Person who can understand your problem more than maybe... You yourself. Than you can explain. <laughs> I should put it that way. Yeah. More than you can explain, you know. Person who lives, you could see Jesus Christ on his lifestyle. That this is what the Lord was teaching us. And some of us have learned a lot from him. When you see me today, I'm driving myself. I don't have a bodyguard. Mm -hmm. I learned from him. Wow. That I don't need anybody to take care of me. If God is for us, who can, can be, be against, against us? So, I've learned a lot from this man, and uh, since that time, I've become a family. It's like we are one family. To me and him, we have never passed one week without talking to him. Hmm. Just been, you know, discussing how we can do the work of God, solving our problems together, challenges that we've been facing together. And I give glory to God, and I'm, I'm very proud to be a friend of this great man of God for over. 30 years. Wow. Really, to me, is a blessing. Wow. That's it's good. a blessing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Did he share anything with you that is worthy of us hearing, the viewers? Yes. You said that um, there was no a month or a week that passes mm -hmm. without yeah. you talking to him. And you come all the way from East Africa to West Africa to see him at least twice. Mm -hmm at least once or twice in a year. So that means that there would have been some of the things that maybe he shared with you that maybe we are not aware and that it can give us uh, some insight. Yes, there's a lot of things that this man shared to me. Uh, one of them was, I don't know whether I should speak or not, but uh, I think I have to say, he, he said he has prepared people mm -hmm. for his ministry. And he knows the ministry will live forever. And uh, we knew we used to have those wise men. Mm -hmm. uh, many had his other five prophets. 
he was a man of vision who knew exactly what he's going to leave behind. And uh, I remember the last trip I was in Nigeria. What year was this, sir? Yeah, that was uh, 2019. Okay. Just before COVID. Mm -hmm. 2019. And uh, we met him and uh, he gave me this, this, wow. this cross. Mm -hmm. And he said, he called me a name that he, he has never called me that name before. He said, man of God, you need this oh. in your life. I feel so humbled to be called a man of God with a general of God. He said, I, I give you this. Please use it for the glory of God. I've been keeping this for the right person for the right time. Mm. And I believe you are the right person now. You should take this. Wow. So I took it. I didn't understand that. I will mm -hmm. not see him again. But we've been talking to him, of course, several times during conversation. And then during the, that time, then COVID came in. I could not travel. Mm. Or there were too much restriction on traveling. And even the week that he passed on, I spoke to him on Thursday night. He called me around midnight. Um, 12 minutes. He likes calling at night. Mm. And he spoke some other things that uh, maybe it's not for public, but one thing that I can put on public, he said, uh, Bishop, we need to pray more. Uh, God tell me the best. We might, for the first time he spoke that word. You know, he's a man of faith. Yeah. He's never doubted meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will meet by the mm -hmm. grace of God. But this time he said, we might meet again. Wow. You see? So, on that Saturday night, early in the morning on sun, Sunday, when I heard that he is going to be with the Lord, mm. I started recording those words. Mm. Why this man said for the first time to me on that day that we might meet again. He started now reflecting in my mind that maybe he was saying bye-bye. I really, in my heart, as a person and even my family. But we are still crying. But we have got joy that he has finished the race. And he finished it very powerfully. And uh, I wish and I know we'll meet him by the grace of God. Amen. Yes. Daddy gave everybody, when I said daddy, I mean Prophet C.B. Joshua, he gave everybody a sign that after he passed, they said, oh, could it be this was what he was talking about? Mm -hmm. So we are just have, going to be grateful to God that he gave us that sign, you know, and that uh, we have that opportunity to even experience him closely, you know, unlike other people. So now you talked about driving yourself, mm -hmm. but that's just one. What would you say you have learned being that close to Prophet T.B. Joshua? What would you say you have learned from him? I've learned one thing that it's all about Jesus and giving yourself, giving your time for Christ Jesus. And uh, that man, I don't know whether people they remember, we used to call him uh, those years, mm. a man at the synagogue. Mm. Mm. Every time you find him busy at the church, that's one thing I learned, that you, sh you must commit yourself to the work of God. And I give glory to God that uh, we're imitating that lifestyle. Mm. Nobody can put himself on his shoes, you know. His shoes was too big, too huge for anybody to fit in. But we are trying our best to learn that life of humbleness. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing I saw to this man of God is humbleness. He humbled to, 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 to the end, to the down. Mm -hmm. You can't imagine. And one thing I also learned from him is giving. He was a man who gives, mm. you know. And uh, that's why in our ministry we believe in you are blessed to bless others. You know, we, we, we took it from him, we learned it from him that your life has got no meaning hmm. if it does not bring joy and happiness to other people. So we live here happy, but our happiness is nothing if other people are not happy. That's you know? true. So we need to make sure that as many people as possible, they enjoy that happiness also that we enjoy, they enjoy that joy that we, we have. So we learned a lot that it's not about your happiness. Mm -hmm. It's what about other people. Mm -hmm. We need to balance the two, more to others, less to ourselves. He, he lived by that example. And this is something that I've learned. And i trying to impact our people as well, that uh, 
life is not all about you. Mm -hmm. It's about others as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any other thing you learned from him that you want us to know, or that's all that comes to mind now? Uh, one thing that I learned from him also is he, nobody can do it alone. I can't do it alone, you mm. can do it alone. That's but together, true. we can stop Satan. So that's why I'm very close to those people who work to Prophet T.B. Joshua. Mm -hmm. To me, I look over some of them as my own children, some of them are my own sisters, my mm -hmm. own brothers. Mm -hmm. We work together. Nobody can do it alone. We want to maintain that unity that, that, that uh, the Prophet used to tell us, you know, that we should work together as a team. So when people, they see people from Nigeria coming to this church, they are not here coming as visitors. Mm -mm. They're coming home. That's good. They're coming to their own. This is their own baby. We created the thing together. So they are aware how it is started, how the mm -hmm. ministry started. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to a strange place. It's a place that they know. So I give glory to God. And then, man of God, I promised me before COVID, mm -hmm. last time that day, some people will be coming here. <laughs> we delayed him to open this church mm -hmm. officially, mm -hmm. waiting for him to come and uh, send his people to come and open. Unfortunately, COVID came in and then... Oh, this church was open what year exactly? A long, long time. Okay. Officially. We wanted okay. to make it an official oh. opening. Uh, so that what we wanted to do. And, uh, we were waiting for that right time. But unfortunately, God told me the best. It did happen the way we wanted. But we are happy. What we were dreaming of is happening now. He Bishop, but he, he actually sent people. Yes, he did. He sent. Yes. Even though he was no more physically, yes, yes. he eventually sent prophetess yes. Yenkan yes. An, like he had said. We give glory to God. <laughs> and we are so happy with that. Yeah. And uh, people, they must understand. These are not the last time. Mm -hmm. They keep on coming and more people be coming. Amen. Because we are a team mm -hmm. that prophet T.B. Joshua mentored. Mm -hmm. And all of us, we are one. We believe like a hand. It's just one is a this is a finger, mm -hmm. this finger, and another one, this finger, mm -hmm. another one, this finger. Mm -hmm. uh, this how makes this what makes a hand. Yeah. So when they see me to theirs and they see them here, they should understand we are one, and we believe we we'll continue being together and standing for the glory of God. Amen. So it's not everybody that has the opportunity that you have. Clearly, we have been here for three weeks. We have fellowship with you for two Sundays. Two Sundays before the prophetesses finally arrived. And we had the event in the weekend that passed. We've seen that uh, the anointing that flowed in the man of God, is still flowing in the man of God, you have a portion from there. Is the same anointing that flows in you almost even the pattern of your prayers i was taking experience from some international visitors and they said even the way you deliver your message and you do your administration is almost like that day now my question is that it's not everybody that had that opportunity that did not grow from synagogue that has that is anointing would you tell us how this come about i might have not stayed there but i want to assure you I was staying there. <laughs> <laughs> I was staying there. Why I'm saying this? Because this is the man that we've never passed a week without talking. Sometimes he will call me and tell me something that I cannot live in here. He said, pray for this. And you go back on Sunday next week, next Sunday service, you find it there. So this is what Dad was saying we should pray for. Mm -hmm. So he, he had a concern about us here. Yeah. And uh, I'm convinced hundred percent that uh, man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, had a reason for this ministry. When we were constructing this ministry, he contributed hmm. on the construction of this temple. The temple we are sitting here, he contributed. Financially? Yes. Spiritually? He did. He did. Financially. Hmm. Spiritually, he was doing it from day one. Hmm. But I'm talking about financially as well. He contributed. Wow. to put this kind of structure, you see. So, to me, this is his church. Mm -hmm. If he built this church, how do you expect that anointing not to flow <laughs> in his own church? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, the grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. So, we, we believe that for that reason, that's why God has connected us together. And uh, 
if, if, if you've got a God, I'm going to come and it give birth. To give birth to a cow. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a true. God will give birth to a God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I belong to that family, mm -hmm. I should work like my dad. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I thank God. That actually, I'm proud mm -hmm. to see that grace flowing into this place. You know. And I pray that it will continue even after our lifetime. Amen. The young people that we are mentoring now, that grace should continue flowing. It's all about Jesus Christ. Wow, that's good. So, what would you say are the attributes characteristic of Prophet T.B. Joshua that stood up the most for you? We know you talked about that, but what would you say stood out the most for you in all of his attributes and characteristic? Uh, his love for God, God work. It's just too much. Mm. That man invested everything to God. Everything to God. Mm. You know, every time I used to go to synagogue, every time you go, you find something new. Mm. Look at the house of God itself. Mm. It's so wonderful. Wonderfully made. Mm. And every time you come, you see some other changes. Mm, new His passion for God's work was just awesome. Mm. I pray. May God give me that grace too. That is my prayer. Okay. The That's passion right. for God. <laughs> we can say you have. Okay, what inspired? When we came in, we saw that literally this looks like another synagogue, though I understand that you said daddy built it. When I mean daddy, I said prophet T.B. Joshua literally built this place for you. But I will still ask because I know that maybe he was not there physically. He just sent some financial support, like you have said. But we see so many things that resemble synagogue in this church, from the altar to the inscription. He even have some of daddy's quotes, which I'm going to, I went around and I picked some of them, which I'm just going to read from, from this directly. So, uh, you know, uh, Prophet T.P. Joshua Synagogue Church inscription was changing life, changing the nation and changing the world. Yours is changing life, changing, changing people, people and changing, changing the people. future. Then we have uh, uh, Jesus Christ is still healing, yes. delivering and blessing. Yes. We have he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And then um, we have believing is our connection. Yes. These are all Prophet T.P. Joshua's uh, uh, quotes that are inscripted all over the church. You see, there's unshakable faith in God brings unshakable victory in Christ Jesus. To mention but a few, because we have a lot of them. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can, you, can you tell us? Because he was not here. He just sent his financial commitment. Yes, what? he was not here. Mm -hmm. But in spirit, we are one. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll speak one thing. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. There's a time I saw a vision, which I'll never forget. Hmm. And uh, he came to me and he said, Bishop, thank you very much. I said, what is it? He said, for what you're doing. Hmm. And that was the time we were planning to bring these people together here. The hmm. whole group. Hmm. He, he, he saw that vision, as if I'm talking to a spirit that is really appreciating that we are able to bring the whole group together. Oh. You see, I woke up from vision and I said, oh, Lord, thank you. Mm. Man of God is happy with this. Mm. I'm also happy. So whatever you are seeing here, you are seeing what this servant of God planted into my heart. Oh. He planted into my heart for over 30 years. Oh my God. What you are seeing now is just the fruits. Mm. The tree has grown up. Mm. Now it's bearing the fruits. And the fruits that will last. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for that grace. Yes. Amen. Okay, so um, your church name is Glorious Light yes. International Church. Can you tell us a little bit about this church uh, and what inspired the name Glorious the name Light Glorious. International this Church? It comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 60. Okay. Uh, when the Lord spoke to me, He said, It will be my glory. Okay. It's my glory. It's all people will see. Hmm. And uh, it will be God, the glorious light international church. Why I put the light? Because Jesus said, I'm the light. Hmm. So he comes with his light and mm -hmm. he takes all the glory. Uh -huh. He comes 
with his light, mm -hmm. because he is the light mm -hmm. and he takes all the glory. Mm -hmm. We don't share his glory. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call it Glorious Light International Church. So when you enter the way you've entered in this place, mm -hmm. the light of God will shine into your life and the Lord will take the glory. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Yes, so that's what happened to the name. That, that's why the name came in. Mm -hmm. I don't come with my light because I'm the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'll take the glory. No mask can take my glory. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have come, like I said, we've seen a lot of miracles. We've seen the blind soul. We've seen the lame work. We've seen a lot of miracles that we cannot begin to talk about in this particular interview. We've known that some people have received the impactation from that day. Some people have received shit from the anointing, but along the line, they couldn't maintain it. We have seen it over the years. Um, this question is going to come. You tell us how you have been able to maintain yours, and then how do you think that men of God will be able to? Because we know that you have a lot of more challenges. You're casting out demons. They are going to fight back. They are going to retaliate. So how can do you think that men of God will best maintain this anointing? And if you can please tell us uh, your secret of maintaining it all this long. Maintaining the anointing of God is living the life that will please Christ himself. Hmm. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You cannot be a man of God if you don't fear God. You cannot fear God if you don't fear sin. God is holy. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever wants to worship Him must worship Him in holiness. Mm -hmm. So the anointing of God it can only be kept through holiness. There are a lot of temptation that comes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of pressure that will come. There are a lot of fighting that will come. But when there is holiness of God, it covers all evil things. One thing I believe, mm -hmm. you might have seen or put that quote in the church. Mm -hmm. Whoever is here more from people, hear less from God. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to me very clear that uh, let people talk. But for you, listen to what God is saying. A man of vision must be a man who is capable to hear what God is saying, even if everybody is against it. But if this is the will of God, mm -hmm. you must stand for it, even if it, it is or it forces you to die, you better die for it, because that's the will of God. Mm -hmm. God will sometimes is contrary to what man will is. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is. One thing I've learned is that saving God is to be ready facing challenges. Because every person, every time you see somebody being delivered in the ministry, one thing you should know, it means a demon was there. Mm -hmm. It means devil was there. Mm -hmm. Every time you see somebody being healed, that should tell you, it means sickness was there. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is being healed, that sickness is a spirit. It's moving around, it's going somewhere. Mm -hmm. It will go and enter to somebody. When the Lord Jesus, in the book of Luke, in the book of Mark, he delivered that man who was possessed with demons. Mm -hmm. Yes, who are you saying? We are many. Mm -hmm. They didn't even mention their names. Mm -hmm. When he allowed them, he commanded them to leave. Mm -hmm. They said, Allow us to enter into those pigs. And then they went and entered into the water. They remained in the territory. Mm. They left the man, but they remained in the territory, waiting for the right direction to enter again. Mm. <laughs> but Jesus said, come out and never come back to this place. Mm. The man was delivered. Mm. But the demons refused to leave the area. So I believe one thing, that as we are seeing this deliverance, this healing, mm. there's no mean in this world there will be no more demons, there will be no more sicknesses, mm. they will still be around. 
because the devil was cast out to come into this world. Mm. So there will be those problems there. So only holiness will keep us safe and keep us moving, mm. saving God for the glory of God. So the grace to keep that thing is to remain faithful and genuine servant of God. Mm -hmm. Saving God from your heart. Okay. That's the secret. Thank you then for revealing that to us. We hope that God will give us grace to maintain that. As we round up, um, apart from Chisomo, uh, we hear that before the church rounds up, after grace, we say relax yes. in the precious hands of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Is there any revelation behind yes. that? The Lord told me, as you are receiving your healing, your deliverance, your blessings, if you don't submit in the hands of the Holy Spirit, mm. Satan will come and steal. Mm. Satan will come and destroy. Mm. Satan will come and kill. So once you are delivered, once you are healed, mm. once you are blessed, mm -hmm. the next step is to follow Jesus. That is relax in the precious hand of the Holy Spirit. That's where you are very safe. Outside Christ Jesus, outside the Holy Spirit, you are not safe. Whatever you have received, you can leave it at the gate there. And you lose everything. Mm -mm. So you must relax in the precious hand of the Holy Spirit. So when we are saying Kumbugirani, it means remember. Mm. Kumbugirani in English is remember. Mm -hmm. The best is yet, yet to come. come. Zabwin, Zikadari, Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> in the same way we took from daddy. Yeah. But I put it in local language so that people should understand. Remember Kumbugirani. Zabwino, Zikadari, Zikubwera. The best is it's yet, yet to, to come. come. Oh. <laughs> Then we speak that, uh, uh, that that Psalm 23, verse number 6. You know? Okay, that's, yes. that's good. <laughs> okay, so finally, what words do you have to tell the Christendom all over the world, um, men of God all over the world? We've seen a lot of division in churches. This one are celestial, this one's are Catholic, this one. But everybody that named the name of the Lord is supposed to be one. Like Jesus said, when people came and said that, we saw so, so people are casting demons in your name. Yes. And he said that if they are not against us, then they are for yes. us. Yes. But then we discover that in Christendom now, we, 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 we have a a lot of division in one body of Christ. What advice do you have to say to men of God and the Christendom in the entire world as we round up? Thank you so much. That's very important uh, point and the question. I really appreciate for giving me the grace to comment on it. Thank you. We are all one. We are all the part of that grace. We are all called to save God. There is no need to fight. There is no need to say this is my sheep. Nobody has a sheep. They belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. When Jesus had an encounter with Peter, he said, do you love me? Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, take care of my sheep. He never said, you are sheep. Mm -hmm. My sheep. It yeah. belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. So there is no room to fight for something that does not belong to you. All this coming because people, they don't want to humble themselves. If you humble yourself, it's not about how many people you have. It's how much God is with you. How much the presence of the Holy Spirit is in the ministry. That's what matters. It's not how many people are in the church. It doesn't matter. But how much the presence of God is in the church. Mm. That's what matters. Mm. At the end of the day, he has to take all the glory himself. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to fight. Man of God, if you are listening to me, please work together. Mm -hmm. We had people here that had the crusade. I was the only man of God who went and attended. And everybody was looking at me. Because why this man has come here? And somebody came to me and said, But man of God, why did you attend? My own people, some of them said, Why are you attending? Because some of our members will leave. Said, Which member? We don't have members. They all belong to Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know any member. All members belong to Christ. These ships, they don't belong to me. Mm. I attended their crusade. So why I did that? I humbled myself. If I had time, I would have attended all three days, but because I didn't have time. Mm. The little time that I had, I spent about two hours with them. Wow. And I left, but they were really appreciated mm -hmm. that at least I attended. I believe that 
together we can stop Satan. Mm. Nobody can do it alone. Please, men of God, young people who are coming up now, mm. listen to me and listen to me carefully. You cannot do it alone. You need somebody. And somebody needs you. We are one another's help. Help somebody as you need somebody to help you. And together we can stop Satan in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so Amen. much. So we have come to the end of the interview with uh, Bishop Abraham Simama, but it's not the end. Like you heard him say, we will continue to meet and we will continue to talk. And if there is a place that we need to throw light, just like we have taken time to throw light on some of your questions, we will do that. Like he said, the best is yet to come. So continue and keep watching us. And keep following Bishop Abraham Simama. We have uh, Bishop Abraham Simama Ministry on Facebook. And we have the same on uh, YouTube as well. They will all be connected in the description box. You can follow him. Like you rightly say, this is another branch of Prophet T.B. Joshua's church right here in Malawi. So everything that belongs to Prophet T.B. Joshua is for us, his lovers to protect, is for us, his lovers to speak for when people are coming against. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy and we will continue to use the word of God. We will continue to use the weapon that he has given us to fight them. Having said that, I will see you again when I see you. Bye-bye.